Hey everyone, I've been talking a bit about Dr. Voodoo and his time as Sorcerer Supreme. Today I'm going to be reviewing those comics a little bit, going over them, and in my opinion, the rather serious flaw to this era of Dr. Voodoo history. Because here's the thing, it was never that dumb of an idea. While the larger trends within the comic book industry of cycling endlessly between killing and returning characters from the lands of the dead, or to have an equally endless parade of characters taking on familiar identities, in the case of Sorcerer Supreme it feels a lot more built into the already existing narrative. Unlike something such as Spider-Man or Captain America, Doctor Strange was always explicitly never the first Sorcerer Supreme. It has always been precedent that one individual would take on the role after another, so Dr. Voodoo doing this, even if it always was going to be a temporary thing, was a pretty cool idea at the time. My frustration with this time period was not that it was brought to an inevitable end. It doesn't even bother me all that much that it all went by pretty quickly, as these things never last that long. The issue I have is with how Dr. Voodoo was treated at this time, or how often he was ignored. The full extent of Voodoo's time as Sorcerer Supreme is as follows. He appeared in a handful of series in small canon roles, some of which worked better than others. He had a short solo series that barely ran for two arcs before it was unceremoniously cancelled, kind of on a cliffhanger that was never resolved. And finally, he was featured in one Avengers story depicting him becoming the Sorcerer Supreme, followed by a second one where he uh, died. <laughs> and then finally, there is a third story not long after all of this where Daniel Drum comes back for revenge as a full-fledged supervillain. The finale of which is used as a vehicle to return Stephen Strange to the mantle of Sorcerer Supreme once more. Individually, most of these stories are just fine. He's pretty fun in his Deadpool appearances, his solo series is pretty good and does some awesome stuff, it just sucks it was cancelled, and didn't exactly paint Jericho's character in the best light. And the Avengers stories, while each flawed in their own special Brian Michael Bendis flavored ways, are never terrible. They are each fun as sort of generic adventures with superhero twists and turns, phenomenal art, and some cool moments for the identities of Doctor Strange, Voodoo, and the mantle of Sorcerer Supreme. Yet as far as a character treatment, on Jericho Drum specifically, I would argue this era is a huge disaster for the superhero. Worse by far than his inconsistent but fun wilderness days when he was first founded, and where Jericho would just show up in random comics occasionally years apart from one another. At least in those books, he was largely depicted as a competent superhero outside of the one where he accidentally became a sex predator. Here there is this weird recurring meta-narrative where Jericho Drum, if one didn't know any better, is shown to be one of the worst Sorcerer Supremes to have ever lived. He rarely seems to work with others, he is reckless in how he tries to protect the Earth from mystical threats, he is constantly shown as being in over his head, making mistakes, and getting chastised by the likes of Damon Hellstrom, Stephen Strange, and even Victor Von Doom. It makes Jericho seem almost like a joke, which is not only completely undeserved, but seems like a really silly choice given that this right here was the opportunity to get Dr. Voodoo into the spotlight a little bit. He was always an obscure superhero, so it was never going to be one of those things that would have lasted forever, and I don't think anyone expected that. But I kind of assumed that this time for Jericho would have afforded the character a little bit more grace. I do also think it is worth pointing out, it is pretty easy to find some interesting, although perhaps not simple, discrimination going on here. At a time when Marvel was all too happy to promote characters like Black Panther, putting him front and center of big events like the Do More miniseries, Jericho continued to be ignored. While there was plenty of colored talent around long before and after this era of comic book history, Drum was mostly written at the time by Rick Remender and Brian Michael Bendis, two writers I feel like I'm obliged to point out neither feel particularly qualified or even come across as all that interested in writing for a Haitian man. Bendis in particular feels like he is clearly more comfortable writing American black men like Miles Morales or Luke Cage, and he seems to distance himself from more abroad figures. Additionally, he doesn't exactly have a solid track record in this area, so I'm a little troubled by all this when even Black Panther was never particularly featured by this writer. Hell, Doom War was written by a white man and once again Jericho is given a back seat. It was easier to give Marvel a bit more of a pass in their more innocent and earlier days with Jericho Drum, especially in light of the fact that they were 
at least back then, consistently trying to feature new black superheroes and make them more and more of a thing. But here, I don't know. I didn't really come into these books with this thesis, and I actually didn't start writing this script knowing this was the direction I was going to take with things. I'd been leaning more in another direction, and that the shortcomings around Jericho's writing around this era weren't as much about race as they were of circumstance. Yet, the more I peeled past the layers of context involved here, the mediocrity of these stories, as well as how the character was used at such a prime opportunity, the story is starting to change in my mind. There's been articles written about this, and it feels very relevant this era ends in a rather sudden and abrupt death of Jericho Drum. It's extremely out of nowhere, is unearned by the writing, and feels like it is yet another means to put Jericho's character down a little bit, for no good reason. As much as I like both Bendis and Remender's writing, there's a tone to this that suggests these things are happening to Jericho not because he is doing his best, but because he is actively bad at his job. It's possible they were going for an underdog theme, where, like Spider-Man or something, Jericho has to learn the role of Sorcerer Supreme to get better, gradually finessing his time as a superhero until he becomes every bit as competent as Steven was. But the argument falls apart once Bendis keeps pulling the same crap on the eve of his death. Which, by the way, completely lacked any sense of closure or finality to it. Then the story of Daniel's revenge, which could have again followed up on this death and given us some of that closure, was largely used as a vehicle to restore Steven to Sorcerer Supreme and put an end to any thoughts of talking about Jericho Drum, at least for the time. That really could have been the start and end of Jericho's story, and it would have sucked honestly. While Marvel has many superheroes of color, there aren't many from Haiti out there, and Jericho is by far the one with the most potential to him, in my opinion. Yeah, he can be a little rough around the writing because his character is so thoroughly associated with the voodoo culture, further otherizing this person and his people in the mindset of readers. It feeds into old tropes and ideas of magical negroes in fiction, and obviously none of that is very current and desirable in a improper representation of this nation. Haitians, or even just black people in general. Yet, you have concepts as old as Jericho's character himself that set this man apart. His backstory in psychology and living in New Orleans made him a bit distinct and leave room for good bits of character writing. The correct writers who have a better handle on Haitian culture or even just the basic ability to do a little research could go a long way in making Jericho more palatable of an experience to a more general audience. People can see authenticity. It bleeds through this sort of thing, even in something they're not familiar with like voodoo, which is a closed cultural practice, and most people like myself aren't going to be intimately familiar with it as a tradition. There's a way to do this character well, and it isn't all that different to how one might handle something like Black Panther, or even a person writing a unique character from a cultural background they're not familiar with, like how Gambit is from New Orleans. Unfortunately, in this long, sprawling history of Jericho Drum, we haven't seen much of that, at least not yet. The good news is, Jericho does return, and I do plan on at least one day coming back to this character and covering his time on the Avengers and such. I will be taking a break with Drum for a little bit and just move on to other characters for a time or something, but we will be back one day to take a look at the contemporary Dr. Voodoo. In spite of my issues with this particular era, I'm looking forward to that future. From here, I haven't read much of these books that we're going to be covering going forward, and Jericho is at least seemingly written with more respect and seems like a consistent part of a larger team, all of which seems pretty cool to me. I also think it's really interesting because as far as I can tell, most academic analysis of Jericho Drum ends here with these comics, so everything from this point on has largely been unanalyzed by professional reviewers. I don't know if any of us are asking a lot with this character. I think we just want a fun black man who has cool magical powers and can, like, exist on the same level as Stephen Strange. Unfortunately, I don't really think that's present in this particular era, but I'm really optimistic that going forward it will be. Thanks for watching everyone, and we'll see you next time on Comic Island.